So one of the biggest threats that face amphibians globally is a chytrid fungus, which is a type of invasive fungal pathogen that's thought to have originated around the Korean peninsula. Now this, this fungus is really deadly to amphibians because it interacts with their skin. And the skin of an amphibian is very sensitive, it's very permeable. They drink through their skin, a lot of them breathe through their skin. And if that barrier is interfered by, by the fungus, then they're gonna, they're gonna really struggle to perform those really basic functions. My name is Matthew O'Donnell. I'm the curator of herpetology here at Manchester Museum. A lot of my work is revolved around looking after some critically endangered, some really rare, often misunderstood species from around the world. One of the species that we work with here at Manchester Museum is the variable harlequin toad, which is a beautiful species of buffonid or true toad that's found in Costa Rica and Panama. This species, unfortunately, is critically endangered. In the wild, they're found mostly in these mountain streams. There are a few uh, refuges where they're still occurring. A lot of the work that we do here at Manchester Museum is maintaining some really important populations. Now, these populations of amphibians are often described as amphibian ambassadors, and that's because they have a really important role here to raise the profile of these conservation projects, to help our visitors to understand some of the threats that these animals are facing in the wild. Whenever we acquire any species of amphibian into the collection, we have to quarantine them. So we will often test the amphibians when they're in quarantine, but then we also do periodic testing when they're out of quarantine, just for our own peace of mind to make sure that if there was any very small levels of disease within the population that we house here in the collection, that it was never reaching a level that could become dangerous. We've been really successful with breeding the Antilopus here at the museum. We, we started out with six individuals and we got up to around 29 individuals and actually we could have bred much, much more than that. The agreement that we have with the organizations that, that enabled us to get these collections here stipulated that we only breed a small number every year. We don't want these amphibians to be housed in too cramped conditions. We want to make sure that they have everything that they need. Because of the way that they breed and they come together, often in breeding aggregations, you'll often get competition between males and females and uh, within sex as well, where they might be trying to uh, outcompete others and they might be wrestling. And at that time, there's, there's often a risk that the animals could hurt one another. So you often have to balance the need for competition with the risks of something going wrong or some animals getting hurt. Re-release of amphibians into the wild is something that we all are striving towards as amphibian collections. There are a lot of challenges around the possibility of releasing these amphibians though, because the diseases and the, the conditions that cause these animals to decline in the first place, they're still present at the moment the disease, it is still in the environment. So if you breed these animals, put them back into the wild, they will catch this disease and die. That's not to say that we shouldn't continue to try, but it just means that we have to think about the ethics of that situation. So I think there is hope. There are species that we work with here in the museum that have recovered, that have rebounded from these catastrophic declines. And that's often when they're afforded the time, space, and conservation sort of interventions that will enable them to rebound on their own accord. I think by looking at those positive cases and highlighting them to our visitors, we can show how there is a roadmap to recovery for these really endangered species. And I think the same can be said for the Atalopus. I think there's some amazing people working on the preservation of that particular animal. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that this animal has a future and it's, and it's gonna recover and it'll be back where it belongs thriving in the wild.